Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We begin here at 5 with a family's worst fears realized. An 18-year-old from Grand Blanc has been found dead in Detroit. Jacob Hills was reported missing Sunday afternoon. Less than 12 hours later, he was found shot to death. Family says Jacob and a friend were headed to a party Saturday night at West Warren and Lamphere along the Detroit border with Dearborn Heights, but he would never come home. Sean Lay, live on this story. Sean, uh, family and friends were desperately searching for him. They were going door to door today. We spent the day going door to door, also trying to piece together what happened to this young man from Grand Blanc. Here's what we know is that Jacob Hill spent Saturday on a boat with his family, then came here to Detroit's west side to go to a party with a friend. The police have also developed information, however, saying that Jacob was also trying to connect with someone to purchase a firearm. Now, very early this morning, his own father got an anonymous phone call leading him and police here to this vacant apartment building, actually vacant unit to this apartment building where his son's body was found. Hearts breaking in the Grand Blanc area for Jacob Hills, his family and friends. The 18 year old just graduated high school, but his body found early this morning, discovered in the basement of a vacant apartment on West Warren on Detroit's west side. Police know Hills and his friend came to the area Saturday for a party. We know that occurred. And then uh, on Sunday, when the family hadn't heard from him, they became worried. Hill's friend returned to Grand Blanc, but no sign of the teen. Sunday, Hill's car and cell phone are found in nearby Dearborn Heights. Then police develop information that Hills was in the process of meeting with someone to buy a gun, possibly an AK-47. The victim's father receives a phone call from an anonymous source, and that individual had told the father that the victim was located in a basement of an apartment, a vacant apartment building on Warren Street in Detroit. A neighbor here speaking with Hill's parents Sunday as they were frantically searching for him. His parents was really looking for him. They got their vehicles walking all around looking for him. So if they didn't see him yesterday, then he had to be dumped there. That's heartbreaking. And it's very heartbreaking. Back here live on Detroit's West Side, police confirming that the teen's body Tina had been shot multiple times. Now, police are also being very specific about this part. They want to connect with the friend that Jacob came here with. They have yet to speak with him. They would like to speak with him and any other friends of Jacob's in the Grand Blank area who may know who he was trying to connect with here to buy that firearm or go to the party with. They just need more information to connect these dots to try to solve this. Back to you. And Sean, you've been trying to connect to the family, too. Yeah, close friends of the family kind of walking us through this all weekend long, first uh, reaching out to local four uh, as he was missing and then letting us know that he had actually been found. Now they are asking, of course, for privacy as the worst news possible has been delivered to them early this morning. Yeah. All right, Sean. It was a terrifying scene for travelers at a Dallas airport when a woman fired several gunshots. According to police, a 37 year old woman was dropped off at the airport. Witnesses say she was yelling about her marriage before pulling out a gun and firing shots toward the ceiling. Police shot her and say she was taken to a hospital. Fortunately, nobody else was hurt. Now a local four update. It's good news on two fronts surrounding that bad plane crash Sunday in Ray Township. Two of the three people on board the plane have been released from the hospital and the dog on the plane that went missing has been found alive and well. Victor Williams is live in Ray Township tonight. And Victor, um, so what's the latest on that third victim? So Kimberly and Devin, we know that it was a 17 year old that's actually still in the hospital, but is stable. But even with that, we're not sure how many how many people were expecting an ending like this, considering how bad that crash was. Last night we were concerned mainly about the fact that he might have been injured and the fact that there were coyote in the area. Sharon May is one of many people relieved with the rescue of the five month old golden retriever named Charlie, who was missing following a plane crash at Ray Community Airport. We left about nine or 10 o'clock last night and uh, hoping that we would catch him. And as it turns out, he was caught by the mail carrier driving through um, at 3 a.m. Although Sharon didn't make the actual recovery herself, she was able to place several traps echoing the fire chief Mark Hoskins claim 
that it was a community effort to bring the pup home. As uh, soon as the word got out from our Facebook page, we had the residents, we had farmers, we had people just, just scouring fields and, and wooded areas. Thankfully, the other three people involved are expected to be okay, but we're finally getting an idea of who was on board the Beach A36 fixed wing single engine plane when it fell taking off at 75 feet in the sky. Falling from 10 feet can be can be bad too, but 75 feet in a plane under motion, absolutely. Pilot has some experience because he, he, he placed it down pretty good. Local 4 has been told it was a couple out of Chicago ages 44 and 37, along with their 17 year old niece from Atlanta who remains in the hospital. After things settle down is when it really kind of takes a foothold sometimes, but this has got a really happy ending. Everybody survived the crash and uh, Charlie, the, the, the pup, was found and back with the family. And he was unharmed. Very happiest dog. And it's amazing that all three people were actually able to walk away from that crash. In the meantime, we know that the FAA and the NTSB will be looking for the cause of the crash. Victor Williams. Local okay, Victor, thank you. Senator Gary Peters holding a field hearing today at Wayne County Community College to discuss the 2020 census. And specifically evidence of how Detroit was undercounted and the impact that's having. Jason Colthorpe live right now at Wayne County Community College. Uh, this getting more urgent now almost two years after the count is interesting, Jason. Well, that's exactly the sentiment that the mayor, Mayor Mike Duggan, and Senator Gary Peters took today. You know, every day that... Detroit isn't made whole. Uh, it's an injustice to the city. And today here at the community college, they heard testimony from the mayor, from community groups about what went wrong during the 2020 census. Problems with the 2020 census count in Detroit have been documented. Today, testimony and an academic study from U of M highlighted why it happened, how, and what needs to happen to fix them. The problem was that the census of 2020 was so short staffed, many times they only went to a house once to see if anybody was there, even though their own rules say they had to go six times. The mayor says an undercount leaves a hole of tens of millions of dollars for police and fire, parks, grants, health care, and school programs. Senator Gary Peters acknowledged the appeals process actually has to be expanded to address these problems. We're going to push this issue uh, aggressively. It's clear there is an awful lot of data to show that there was uh, an undercount here in the city of Detroit. Uh, we've got to make it right. Census workers also testified about what they saw. We knew that there were areas that we hadn't covered and time was ticking. You're watching the days go by and we're getting toward the end and they're saying, well, the computers are down. We usually supposed to get our information at the beginning of the day, but sometimes I didn't get mine till like four or five o'clock in the evening, and that's too late. The U.S. government's admitted there's a racial undercount. My question is, uh, what do we do about it? And in a city that's 84 percent black and brown, we are being hammered uh, financially worse than any other city in the country, and I just want to speed up the appeal process so we can get it fixed. In fact, the mayor went even a step further and said this is systemic racism when this happens and they've got to get it fixed. As for a timetable on this, uh, Senator Peters uh, didn't want to put anything like that on this, but he did say this is step one in what is probably going to be a lengthy process. Devin? Well, uh, Jason, among the many ramifications of the census, it affects political representation in Congress. We know Michigan lost another seat in 2020. so. What would a, a successful appeal mean in that way? Well, they don't think, if flat, they've, they said it won't mean retroactively adding a seat back to Congress mm. or anything like that. That, that, one, that ship has sailed. But what they can do is they said, you know, at this point, the, the important thing is getting those resources, getting that money to the city yeah. and uh, helping all of those, those projects, the people that need it the most. Yeah. All right, Jason. President Biden's doctor says the president's COVID symptoms have almost completely resolved now. Yeah, these are live pictures of the White House where the president is currently isolating. Dr. Kevin O'Connor says the president still has some nasal congestion and hoarseness of his voice, but that's an improvement from the weekend when O'Connor said Biden suffered from a sore throat, body aches, and a loose cough. Even though he is vaccinated and double boosted, the White House believes the president was infected with the BA5 subvariant, which now accounts for 80% of all new infections in the U.S. President Biden tested positive for COVID last Thursday. 
Good news at the gas pump. Uh, the Michigan State average down 65 cents a gallon from last month. Here at home, AAA says drivers paying an average of 4.42 a gallon. That's down 19 cents from just last week. In Metro Detroit, AAA says drivers are paying a few cents less, 4.40 a gallon. There, uh, AAA spokesperson says if gas demand remains low, alongside a reduction in crude prices, drivers will likely see gas prices continue to decline. Pope Francis is in Western Canada tonight as he begins a six day visit to personally apologize to the country's indigenous people. The visit also comes as the pontiff continues to deal with health issues. Jay Gray is in Edmonton tonight. Good evening. Officially beginning what he calls a pilgrimage of penance. Pope Francis speaking directly to survivors of abuse and indigenous leaders today just south of Edmonton said forcefully and repeatedly and in plain language that the church accepts responsibility for abuses committed by missionaries against children separated from their families and culture placed in residential schools during colonization. <laughs> He apologized uh, repeatedly, begged for forgiveness, and recognized the need for atonement and reconciliation. He begged forgiveness against the indigenous peoples. It was a deeply personal and, and very emotional day for so many survivors, thousands who gathered to hear the Pope today. Uh, the Pope spending a majority of his time in a wheelchair, something we'll see throughout this six-day trip to Canada because of mobility issues and health concerns, though he did struggle to his feet and stand with the help of a cane as he met with several survivors, traded gifts with some of those who approached him after he made his uh, comments. The Pope will celebrate a public mass. That will come tomorrow here in Edmonton. That's the latest from Edmonton. I'm Jay Gray. Now back to you.